Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Nadia Breeze. I'm a registered early childhood educator and a professor of early childhood education at Sheridan College in Ontario, Canada, where I have taught since 2007. So today I'm going to talk to you about my literature review on educator financial well-being and implications to practice. The idea of educator well-being has been important to me for some time. I think a large part of that comes from, um, well, harsh caregiving, the importance of quality, responsive, sensitive interactions, and what gets in the way of that. And so, you know, we know stress gets in the way of that. We know even from a neurobiological sense that um, stress can create dysregulated adults. And if we're dysregulated, then, you know, it's really difficult to be calm. We can't. We physically, actually, we cannot co-regulate. We cannot be the calm in those situations. And so what's creating this stress and what do we do about this stress? And while things like meditation and mindfulness are really great strategies, one of the things that started to come up for me was that we're asking educators to do so much already. The demand is increasing and their basic needs, you know, financial needs are not even being met. So what kind of stress is this creating? It makes me think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and, and how those really basic foundational needs are not being met. And yet we're expecting, you know, higher level support from them in terms of um, not necessarily self-actualizing, but being able to create these supportive, responsive relationships. And in order to do that, educators must be well. In order to, you know, um, create these well children, educators must also be well. And so this is what sparked my literature review. I'll leave my background and aims here um, for you to just have a look at, but um, what I'm really hoping to demonstrate here is that, um, you know, low wages impact stress, and when educators are stressed, it's going to impact their overall sense of well-being, when well-being is compromised, and this is going to affect their practice. Um, and so my aim really is if at all possible, to influence policymakers, to influence, um, you know, the, the understanding that it's really necessary for us to have a well workforce, and that includes a well paid workforce. Um, and that what the data will show, what the literature is going to show here is that low wages are consistently a problem. So let's have a look. So let's look at before beginning, what is educator financial well-being? And I looked at two sources to get an understanding of what that looks like, and it can be defined as the ability to pay for expenses, as well as a feeling of financial security in the present, as well as the future. Um, now, these definitions come from um, a study by King et al., preschool teachers, financial well-being, and work time supports. And then the other source from Muir et al., is um, exploring financial well-being in the Australian context. Now, when we look at the literature, one of the things we see is that internationally there's consensus on low pay and status of ECEs. And so this alone tells us by the standards above for financial well-being um, that ECEs are generally not financially well, right? Like when you have low pay, when you have low status, um, you're worried about um, being able to pay your bills. And uh, if you look at the figure um, to the right, um, and this comes from White Book in 2014, one of the biggest contributors to educator stress was economic insecurity. So from the 616 childcare workers um, that were surveyed, 57% felt somewhat or strongly worried about their economic insecurity. And in the figure um, beside us, it goes over what were some of those insecurities. And you can see that ranges from things like having enough food for family on one end to having a large enough amount of savings for my retirement on the other. Wage is often cited as the reason for leaving the field. So how do low wages impact educator well-being? Well, well, there's a number of ways or there's a number of things coming out of the literature. Um, one of the, the interesting studies that I came across was um, one that had almost half a million participants. And this is coming out of the U.S. And these were phone surveys. And um, what uh, Kahneman and Deaton found in 2010 were that low income levels were associated with low life evaluation and low emotional well-being. Um, low emotional well-being was also tied to ill health and a decrease in resilience. And so when we're talking about resilience, we're talking about the ability to face, um, you know, life's hardships, things like 
divorce, um, being alone, even physical things like asthma. And so um, we can see that this has an impact on well-being, on, on, you know, mental health. The other thing that comes up quite a bit in the literature, literature, excuse me, is effort, reward, imbalance. And the idea here is when efforts are not fairly rewarded, it has an adverse effect on mental and physical health. Consistently throughout the literature, one can see there's a pattern of frustration that emerges from educators. They're feeling that their efforts are not fairly rewarded or recognized. Um, we see this with uh, poor pay, working conditions, low professional status. These are all fa factors on educator well-being. Um, and this translates into workplace stress, into burnout, into turnover. And one of the things that was noted in the research as well in the literature was this increase in professionalization has um, also increased demand, right? We're expecting higher qualifications, more training, more documentation, portfolios. The job expectations have increased. Um, so that demand, that effort, there's more expected, but the compensation levels, the reward remain low. So the idea is when demand is high and reward is low, it's going to be stressful. It's going to be taxing. It's going to have an impact on educator well-being. And so one of the things we see is that low wages contribute to stress. Core et al. 2014, they did a systematic literature review. They found low quality work environments saw an increase in unhealthy behaviors. So consuming low quality foods. It also had an impact on educator mental health. Linen et al. 2017 looked at 274 childcare workers, and um, they also exhibited poor health indicators, things like, and really in line with what we would see with low-income workers in other fields. So we would see obesity, disrupted sleep, poor activity, and diet, um, chronic health conditions. Low wages were also correlated with an increase in unhealthy behavior like smoking, um, drinking sugary, sweetened drinks. Low wages were also a contributor to stress, anxiety, and depression. We know from previous studies with mothers in low-income positions that this has an adverse effect on sensitive, responsive interactions with children. And we know this is a crucial element in childcare, in high-quality childcare. So we know that educator mental health and wellness consistently are correlated with high-quality care. Um, in a recent study from Johnson et al., and that's in 2020, they were looking at um, 109 American early childhood educators. This was through survey and classroom observation. Of all the stressor, stressors, excuse me, measured low teacher salary impacted outcomes related to quality the most. And so um, that looked like, you know, worse classroom management, poor quality of instruction. In 2015, King et al. looked at uh, preschool teachers' financial well-being, and this was a study of 98 preschool um, educators in the United States. And what they saw was, um, you know, financial stability was also really closely tied with, you know, positive interactions, being able to have um, emotional availability with children. They saw that compensation was also identified as closely related to sensitivity, to their feelings of stress, and to the overall emotional climate of the classroom. Now, what we see is depression, stress, and anxiety have been found to interfere with one's ability to provide sensitive, responsive care. It impacts on perception and response to children's behavior and their learning. We saw this um, in Hamer and Pinata uh, 2004. They looked at 1,217 American non-familiar caregivers with self-reported symptoms of depression. They were more withdrawn, they showed to be more withdrawn, and showed less sensitivity towards children. Uh, De Schipper et al. in 2008 looked specifically at mood, and um, positivity and optimism were shown to have a positive impact on quality of care and children's well-being. Lower levels of reported happiness also correlated with less structure and limits in the classroom. So these are all examples of how educator well-being can impact practice. We know that a key contributing factor to high quality care is dependent on the relationships between educators and children, specifically warm and responsive relationships. When educators are unwell, when they're showing, you know, depression, stress, anxiety, um, you know, this impacts their ability to be responsive, to be sensitive, even their perception to children's behavior. We know warm and responsive relationships are significant in high quality care. 
Uh, Sims, Gillyfoil, and Perry uh, even noted, and this was uh, taken through cortisol levels, that children in the care of highly responsive caregivers had lower levels of stress. So this is showing, you know, that idea of when educators are well, this is all also going to impact the well-being of children. So it's important. It's important that we have educators that are well. It's also influencing the well-being of children in their care. Turnover and retention came up a fair bit in the literature. And it is an issue that's important to educator well-being and practice because it interferes with quality. We see that, um, you know, turnover rates are substantially high and a much higher than they are in other teaching professions, as you can see in the statistics from White Book and Sakai, a 30% versus 7% difference. Um, we can also see that, um, you know, White Book and Sakai talked about this idea that the only other industry to see reports of turnover this high uh, were the fast food industry. And I think that's really telling. Low wages are often cited for the reason for departure from the position. The other thing that's important to note is liter the literature um, discuss the idea of uh, educators being um, career driven, having high education credentials, and often um, being motivated to leave for the school system where wages are higher and professional status is also higher. These departures have an impact on um, quality, on relationships. We see that it disrupts the continuity of care between educators and children, which is really part of healthy attachment, which we know is a, is a part of high quality education and care. These departures also interrupt uh, interpersonal relationships between educators, which have been found to be buffers for stress. And we know that those departures make it difficult for remaining educators to do their job well. Based on the findings, some of the implications I see for future research are related to gender and wage inequity. Um, this is a predominantly female field. The literature was showing sample representation of 95 to 97% being female. There's some um, ideas of you know, the work being viewed as uh, women's work, uh, a maternalized view of working with young children, that this is something that's innate to women, women's work. Um, and so I think this would be an interesting thing to look at. How does gender influence the low wages we're seeing in the field? There's also a need to look further into uh, well-being, replication for studies, and related to that, um, and Perhaps this is my bias being Canadian, but I would like to see more replication of these studies in the Canadian context as well. I think there's a, a gap there. Overall, the literature suggests low wages create financial insecurity for many educators, which further impacts physical and psychological dimensions of well-being. This also impacts practice, specifically related to responsive care and sensitive interaction. Low wages also have a negative impact on the social well-being of educators. High turnover rates disrupt interpersonal relationships, which have been shown to be a buffer to stress when said relationships are positive and supportive. The literature also suggests increasing wages will help in retention of high-quality educators. While the Lit Review aims to demonstrate low wages influence on ECE well-being and practice, it's important to note that regardless of outcomes, Educators have the right to high quality work environments, which include a sense of financial well being. I've included my references here. Now, before I wrap up, I wanted to direct your attention to a campaign that's currently happening with the Association of Early Childhood Educators of Ontario and the Ontario Coalition for Better Childcare called Rise Up for Childcare. This conference is about early childhood voices. For this reason, with the permission of the AECEO, I would like to conclude my presentation with stories from the Rising Up for Child Care campaign. I encourage you to visit their Instagram link, um, which you can find under the pictures. These highlight the lived experiences of early childhood educators in Ontario. Thank you for your time.